thank you. Oh, Father, I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. Bless you. I'm Alexa. I share this name with lots of amazing people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning. Sorry about that. We get interrupted by all sorts of devices, but good morning to you all. This is the Bridge Network City Church Canada. I want to welcome you this morning to the Bridge Network City Church Canada on our Real Success Seminars. They're designed to help you bring the principles of scripture into your business, your career, and your leadership skills. And um, this is the fourth and final for this month on the topic of honor in business. And we've tagged it the business of honor restoring the heart of business and um, we believe it's been a powerful month we believe it's been a useful month we believe it's something you need to but before we do anything else we must remember what's happening around the world right now Myanmar Syria Afghanistan the northern parts of Nigeria the eastern parts of Nigeria. We must remember, of course, the Russian-Ukraine war and the senseless killing and destruction of life and property that has caused the whole world to respond at with such extremities. And there's a huge inflation hitting the whole world right now. Can we take a few minutes this morning to just pray. The Bible says it's our job to pray for peace. It's our job to pray for peace, to pray for leaders so that there will be peace and this gospel will be preached as a witness. It's our job to stand in the gap, to make up the hedge. It's our job to pray for kings because God turns their heart in whatever direction that he wants. We lift up the leaders of these nations. We lift up the leaders of all the nations who can make a difference. And ask you, Lord, as we as our hearts reach out to you concerning what's happening right now. Father, because of your mercy, cut this down. Because of your mercy, have mercy on us. Have mercy on the many families going through hell with the soldiers on the Ukrainian side and in the Russian side. We pray for those in authority, President Putin, President Walensky, and all the other prime ministers and leaders of all other nations. We pray for hearts, oh God, that will cause this not to escalate and become global, but Lord, there will be a containment in the name of our Lord Jesus of this particular conflict right now. You're not willing that any should perish, but all should come unto the knowledge of the truth. And so, Father, we're here pleading for the precious Spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I don't even know what to pray for as a heart, but I'm grateful for the precious Holy Spirit whom you've given to me. I trust him he will give big in me now and give direction to my spirits and illumination to my mind. In Kenin Kaloto stole in Itakia. Apollo pressed the past the Dieka. Manta Castoluto stole the Kiata. Mocos tepa testele catest. 
Akieto stole to steady kia tolo kana. And Prabha stole to story nita pai. A papa stole so to stali kate tema. Mpanto to store tista kia da kala sata. Man to store na stia kala da. She to store nita. Kes to the toste. A palo pasto to stepana nante kerete. Man to costele to tasto tia. Kate stepa no stole to costele te. And pastor, as the kia tolo so tos, a pastor non stole ni takaeta, man to stole ni stekia, seto to stole te. Thank you. Kia stole no pravata, mpava pravatos te pala ni te pala ni, na kia toko ste pala na, ati apalo stole mbrez te me, and prama stole so pate ste likere, eto stole na pa kia ta palo stole non te te be. Thank you. 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 We give you praise, O oh God. We give you praise, O oh God. We give you praise, O oh God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. So let's just welcome you to the Bridge Network. Welcome. This is the Bridge Network, City Church, Canada. Our vision is outstanding life in service to God, transforming the world. And for the world, and we know that you will stay for the kingdom. And connecting to each other, to community, and of course, to God. Welcome this morning. We're going to start with some music. Um, we haven't listened to this in a while now. Again, it's from Green Worship. It's just amazing, amazing song. I want to thank the team at uh, Green Worship, Pastor Walid and the rest of the team. And kudos to this absolutely brilliant musicians who are shaping and reshaping the music that comes from our country and our continent. I hope the world gets blessed by it.
listen to their music and support this cause. I think they're absolutely delightful. And they've been a, such a blessing to the country. So once again, I want to say thank you to Green Worship and to Pastor Wale. I've had to verbally ask him for permission to use this material. Well, let's just move on. And um, thank you for tuning in, those of you who will be watching this live and those of you who will be watching it much later. Um, this is the last in the, for this month that we're going to talk about honor. It's really honor and business. And I'm going to go in a slightly different direction from the last three weeks. We've had a guest minister who gave a remarkable message, Dr. Damola. We also have Dr. Tunde Adebola's message that is available. I'm going to share that on our site. I think I already have. But um, what's important to me right now is understanding why we're studying this topic at all. Just want to remind you, the church is the only organization in the world that exists for its non-members. And it's such a profound thing. It's such a way of thinking. And it's such a system. What do I mean? You, we exist as a church. But the church, generally, the church globally, we exist for people who are outside the church. And the minute they join the church, they start to work for the interest of those who are outside the church. So it's an unending cycle. And this is the prophecy that I received in March 2021, many uh, a few months ago, about a year ago. 
God is just reinforcing, re reinforcing some things. I'm not preparing you for the church, but I'm preparing you for the world. A world in which you'll be tested harder and tougher than your peers. Why? For my glory and for my honor. For the honor of my name, for my kingdom and righteousness. And after you've been tested, you will come forth as gold, pure, unsoiled by the world. And John, Job chapter 23 verse 10 confirms that. Yet he knows my, the way I've taken. When he's tested me, I will come forth as gold. And in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7 is telling us here, so that the proven character of your faith, more precious than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, will result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And so this whole thing about who we are, why God needs to bless us, why we need is because God has created us to be a blessing to the world. And all my life I've believed, all my Christian life, my adult life, all the life I've been in ministry, which is well over 30 somewhat years of ministry, I've always known that one of the greatest leverages you have in life is favor. But in all the years of teaching and in all the years of trying to apply it in my life, I'd had very limited success. In other words, I would experience some level of favor, but I didn't enjoy it the way I should have. And I knew something was missing. So in January, we started to reintroduce the topic of favor. And we began to study it. And then, just as God will always do, he led me direct down to the path of uh, Apostle Joshua Salmon, who brought in a paradigm that I felt was critical to where we're going. How to activate, how to increase in favor. And he totally explained to us, he told us very, very clearly, and that favor is merited favor, the merited that it's merited as opposed to grace, which is unmerited. And one of the ways we merit it are the ways he believes we merit it is one, through honor, number two, through value that we bring to, uh, to people or to society, and then number three, relationships, and I think the fourth one is prayer, and then the last one is the impartation that comes from uh, a story like the story of Esther. Now, I'm not going to spend time on all this, but he begins to make profound statements, and I was challenging uh, the Nigerian church a little bit earlier, that if a man makes a statement like what's on the screen right now, all failures in life are often traced to dishonor, dishonor to God or dishonor to men, dishonor to principles, then you and I must take this thing seriously and search the scriptures to find out if they're so. If they're so. Honor, <laughs> if he makes a statement like, all failures in life are traced to dishonor, dishonor to God, dishonor to men, and dishonor to principle. It's then worthy that we take our time to find it. And that's why, if we understand that favor is a system of advantage that you need beyond everything, as the Bible says, the race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong, but riches to men of understanding, for time and chance happened to them all. If we know, that these things are not won by our, our position, our abilities, then we would realize why favor is critical to our life. And Apostle Simon spent a great deal of materials teaching us this, and it's readily available uh, on YouTube, and we also have notes to accompany it. So if you need any of that, just let me know. All right? Honor is the discerning, the celebration, and therefore the rewarding of uniqueness, usefulness, and of excellence. This honor is the trivializing of useful, of, uh, is, 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 sorry, this, this honor is, is that, sorry, <laughs> this honor is the trivializing of usefulness or of usefulness. It means you have very little esteem attributed to that thing that you're dishonoring. Honor is also a willingness to place value on a person or something. Honor is not a gift, it's the chosen virtue, all right? And he begins to explain to us that, that I mean, questions as a question is the seed for an answer. He's showing us a pattern here. Honor is the seed for access. Dishonor is the seed for closed doors. The pursuit of God, the knowledge of his person, the conformity to his image is of no end. It is a continuous transition. However, it becomes victory in the kingdom when the systems of God and the principles that make for victory are known to be finite, where there are things we can know, 
And that's what this is all about. And First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32 tells you and I that the children of Issachar were men who had an understanding of the times and knew what Israel ought to do. I, I don't believe for one minute God wants us to be ignorant of what he wants us to do. Um, a few days ago, I was listening to Dennis Prager speak about inflation and he began by saying listen guys i'm more afraid of inflation than i am of covid 19. and he began to give us examples about how in israel sorry in germany one of the reasons why hitler was able to come into power with their unusual nazi propaganda and their their very horrible uh, um, policies they came into power because of inflation that had hit germany at that time which was called a slightly different name uh, a different name completely sorry not slightly and he began to explain that when inflation hits, we tend to let go of our liberties and we tend to begin to put people in office that are not really in our best interest. And right now, the whole world is being hit with inflation right now, right now as we speak. Our nation is being hit with, with, with inflation. Car prices have gone up here in Canada. Costs are beginning to rise. Petrol prices have gone up. We need to know what Israel ought to do. We need to know what to pray. We need to know what to expect. We need to know what we structure. And so, I want to talk a little bit about honor, then I'll zero in on where I want to go with all this. Because it's something I still feel we don't take very seriously. And I tried to explain this morning to the other church when I began to minister, was the fact that until we see the benefit of something, we won't give it our best. Even Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the Bible says, for the glory that was set before him endured the cross. You're not going to face honor until you realize how much it makes a difference in bringing favor upon your life. It's a powerful thing. And I don't want us to forget why we're studying honor so that we don't get emotional about it or the teaching about honor in church. No, it's about bringing favor into your life or better still, increasing the favor of God upon your life. And this is in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. But when it gets to verse 3, it changes slightly and says, I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In other words, God is telling us that he's why honor is such a critical thing for us and how much he doesn't like when people dishonor people, especially his people, you know? And um, this is a quote from one of our administrators written by John Bever. It says, true honor is an outflow from the, a heart that fears God. But the one that really blew me away was the one by Calvin Cool Coolidge. It says, no person was ever honored for what he received. Honor has been it has been the reward for what people give. And when we had Dr. Damola speak to us, she began to tell us that honor is a doing, it's a word, it's a verb, it's a doing word. It's something we do. And I love this so much. Honor has been the reward for what people give, not for what people get. And so this is not about you getting honor or you being honored as much as you will be. It's really more of do you understand how powerful honor is and how much honor can make a difference and that brings me very clearly to where, what i where i want to go tonight i began to study and the more i began to study i began to realize wait a minute is there a connection between customer service and honor and as i did my research i found out that that's exactly what customer service is it's just honoring your customers it's just Sorry, that's what they, it's just honoring them, just making them feel special. And a few days ago, a, a, a particular connector to my, uh, my phone and my iPad became faulty. And I ordered for one from Amazon very quickly. And within 24 hours or 48 hours, they had sent it. But when it arrived, I even delayed it for a few hours before I tested it. I tested it and it didn't work. And immediately I got up and went and, and sent a message to Amazon or clicked on the button that I want to return. And of course, you follow all these charts you have to fill. And I said, why? I said, because it wasn't working. Immediately, Amazon sent me uh, forms via email for, to, re to, re to return the, the, the things and asked me to print it out, show me what to do. I quickly and promptly did it. 
and went straight to the UPS office to, to give it to them to return to Amazon. And to my amazement, after I gave it to them, by the time I got home, my refund had already been activated. I thought to myself, this is customer service. They've honored me. And because they've honored me so much, where am I going if I want to buy something tomorrow? And so I want to talk to you about today, about three actions you need to take to own three actions, you, uh, three actions to take to honor your customer's assets. And it's written by this wonderful lady called Jenny Bliss. She has a book out and something about your mother. I'll try and get the title properly. Let me start. And this is what she says here. She says, remember customers, remember customers, take care of them and do not take them for granted. This is an opportunity to honor customers for how they honor us. But it's better to watch her video and you would really be blessed by it. That's what I want to play for you right now. So just listen to it. It's not long. It's only about five minutes or three minutes, and then we should be back. Thank you. When a new pet store moved into Janine's neighborhood, she was ecstatic. Her schnauzer buddy could now be just minutes from care if he needed it. And she just loved the convenience. The day after the store opened, she went over and registered Buddy, signed up for the loyalty program, and make an, made an appointment for his first grooming. She continued those appointments every six weeks, like clockwork. Over the years, she also purchased all of Buddy's toys and food from the store and went there for any physical ailments that he had. She was a devoted pet mom to Buddy and she kept giving her business to the store because it was so close. But Janine always felt like something was missing in the experience with that store. It felt to her that Buddy was just a number there. Because the staff turned over constantly, no one recognized Buddy as a regular. The staff often didn't check records before Buddy's appointment to get to know him or to get to know Janine. So when Janine showed up 10 minutes late for an appointment and was told that because she wasn't there on time, that they had moved on to the next dog and she'd have to reschedule her appointment, she'd had enough. The staff made no effort to give her the benefit of the doubt or even to contact her to find out where she was. They didn't know her and certainly hadn't tallied up all that she had spent there. Janine stopped shopping there after five years of weekly purchases and constant grooming and care that she went to that store for. And the net value she took with her as a customer was over $4,000 a year. Would you take your mom's money for years and then not recognize her or cut her a break? Well, you know the answer to that question. Janine, like most customers, yearns for a company to keep track of and know how much they have given to an organization and how much they've been loyal to them. They want people to know this information about them and honor them accordingly. Think of your own life as a customer. <laughs> What's the first thing you think of when a company you've been loyal to treats you like a number? It's, don't they know how much I spend here? If you walked into your favorite restaurant every week and no one recognized you after the fifth visit, how would you feel? Would you eventually stop going? Remember customers, take care of them and don't take them for granted. This is our opportunity to honor customers for how they honor us. But it takes doing the hard work to know customer value. It takes a commitment to give your people the information and also the permission to make informed decisions about actions to take with and for the customers in front of them. According to eConsultancy, only 42% of companies are able to measure customer lifetime value. And those that do it behave differently with their front line and with how they serve and in how they reach out and embrace their customers. 
Make mom proud companies give their people the tools to know customer lifetime value and to prepare them with options to ensure customers know they're valued. This is our opportunity to say to customers, we know you, we value you. We realize that without you, we don't have a business. Alaska Airlines, for example, resists industry practices that signal to customers that they're undervalued. Instead, they prove that they value customer loyalty, for example, by continuing to award miles to customers based on mileage. This presses against the industry shift to instead give miles based on ticket price. This Alaska practice says, we value you that you fly with us, not we value you when you pay more. Wow. Wow. What hey, it's Linda Rayner of LindaRayner.com. Sorry about that. We may have changed um, location. Again, this is by um, Jenny Bliss, and uh, it's absolutely brilliant. She has a book. Um, I, I'm going to say it in a minute. Uh, she has a book called What You Do. Sorry, would you do that to your mother? That's the name of the book. And it's a beautiful book. I just got it myself and uh, started reading it. And um, this is an excerpt from her online uh, course, which is, uh, so I want to encourage if you want to get her book, they, they, her website and the link to her page is up on this particular platform. I want to thank her for this brilliant presentation that she did. And this brings me to where we want to go. And if this is this is where I'm going with this, and I, and I need you to understand where I'm going with all this. If this principle of honoring people can make such a big difference in business, if if it can make such a difference in in bringing business to you, then we should take this very seriously, even in life. And she began to explain to us the experiences that Jenny, and I'm not going to read through the notes anymore. The notes are just there to help people. She's going to highlight a few things. And she's telling us here now that customers expect to be known. Customers expect to be known. And it's so, it really bothers me to think that with the technology that is available in 2022, we don't leverage them to get information about customers. There's almost no social media platform that is available right now that does not give you data on the people who are visiting your page or the people who are buying things from you. Today, the technology to be able to monitor people and know what they like and be able to respond to their needs, it's amazing. I have people who you send messages to, they don't respond, they don't call you back, they don't they get your email, they don't acknowledge it. And it's becoming a real problem for all of us. And we're losing out on our customer base. Which says customers expect to be known. Which is asking a question here, do you provide your team with the tools to do so? Listen, honoring your customers is one of the greatest and simplest way you bring value to them. And once you do that, you get a customer for life because the cost of replacing the customer is at least four times as much as keeping the same customer. And I remember many years ago growing, I mean, when I started out this idea of understanding customer service, one of the first things people will say to you is make your customer your friend. Because once they're, they're your friend, they'll come back. And then she goes on to say, uh, of course, you asked this very ridiculous question. Will you take your mom's money for years and then not recognize how cut I break? Somebody's been buying something for you for years and there's no room, in, there's no place in your business that allows the person one or two mistakes or even some kind of privilege for doing that with you. And so she goes on and says, we need to commit to understanding customer value. We need to understand how much a customer is bringing to our business. That will make us appreciate them more. We, that will make us begin to understand, you know, what that customer needs. 
how important that customer is to us. When we take time to understand customer value. Now, it doesn't really matter whether you're the owner of the business or you're an employer and the employee in the business. It doesn't really matter. You've got to learn how to understand your customer value. And I think the last one is signal that you, you value customer loyalty. Let them know. You see, there's a certain way we think that customers are not that important. They are. Or we don't want them to know how important they are. They know how important they are. They just want you to live up to the expectation or in many cases, exceed it. And we've seen companies like Amazon exceed such expectations. And it's one fantastic way to be able to get your business to grow. And she gives the example of Alaska Airlines. Now, most airlines give you air miles based on the cost of your ticket. Alaska Airlines gives you air miles based on the actual miles you travel. And that alone has just tilted that airline to go to another level. And people look at it differently and people appreciate it a little differently than anybody else. You and I must begin to do this as well for our businesses to be able to succeed. She says, Alaska, Alaska Airlines practices, we value you that you fly with us, not that we value you because you pay more. I'm happy to tell you that Janine has a podcast and a, and a YouTube channel you can easily sign up to. Now, one of the reasons, one of the things that brought this home for me was another article written by Scott Turansky. And he says, honor is customer service brought home. And I thought, wow, this is almost saying the same thing, except they're looking at it a little bit differently. And he begins to tell us, when was the last time you received a surprise? Not a big surprise, like a birthday gift or something like that, but an unexpected thank you, an encouraging one from somebody that you appreciate, a thoughtfulness about you, somebody going out of their way to let them, let, letting you know that you're special. They may not have given you anything of real value, but they've been able to connect with you in ways you didn't think was possible. And he's explaining here that good customer service does the same thing. You look with delight on the experience because the person has treated you in a very special way. And that's exactly what honor does. It gives more than what is expected. It adds energy to relationships and, it's, and the result is a delight. Then he encourages us to try a little experiment. He says, give on little unexpected gifts of kindness and watch what happens. Give a small gift here, a patient response there. Let somebody go in front of you. Encourage somebody with a compliment. Watch the smiles and other pleasant responses. You too will be glad. Those are examples of how you can show honor. And people are delighted and filled with joy when they experience this. But let's take it a little bit further. And this is the part that really got me. In the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus made several statements about the value of doing more than expected. He says, especially in verses 38 to 39, he says, you've heard, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. This is standard what is expected. But he says, don't resist an evil person. If somebody strikes you on the cheek, turn the other way. In other words, do exactly the opposite and more of what is not expected, but something that is truly, truly unique. Now, where am I going with all this? Jesus talked about the benefits of giving a little extra to others. He talked about going the extra miles, turning the other cheek, doing your acts of righteousness in secret, blessing your enemies. All these are examples of honor. God loves and honor and even rewards those who also give to others. Honor not only benefits others, but it changes the giver and makes him more enjoyable to be around and generally a more joyful person. Let, let's try and finish this. Last week, if you remember, with Mrs. Abiosa, who was on this platform then, I began to talk about the fact that our kids have not been taught to honor. Now, I think if you wait until they're older, you're going to find it far more difficult to teach them. And this gentleman begins to tell us that once you begin developing this quality in yourself, you need to teach it to your kids. God has hidden, hid, sorry, God has hidden within 
honor the secret ingredients for success. It's a profound statement. God has hidden within honor the secret ingredients of success. And just now, when the kids are young, but for, no, sorry, not just now, but when, when the kids are young, but for the rest of their lives. And this is interesting that the Bible mentions that children should obey their parents two times in the Bible. But it tells them eight times that they should honor, which means there's a lot more emphasis on honor than even obedience. Furthermore, the Bible uses honor in eight commands. And these are the eight commands. We're, going, we're not going to go through into any detail. We're not going to go into the references because of time. But look at some of them. It says honor God, honor pastors, honor widows, honor marriage, honor your body, honor, honor governmental leaders, honor wives, and then of course, on our parents. And you will see that there is a pattern here that we all need to be very aware of. And then he goes on and says, and if that isn't enough, then look at the ninth time. Look at the ninth time where God issues a command using the word honor in Romans chapter 12, verse 10. He says, honor one another above yourselves. This to me is the ultimate, that we are supposed to honor every single person. How do you honor a thief? By giving him a good trial. How do you honor a cheat? By making sure that when he's arrested or whatever the case may be, or stop giving him business because he's doing something that is bad. All these things are honorable because we, are, we don't need to look at honor as, as something that is, that is uh, how do you put it? We don't, need to look to, we don't need to look at honor as something always positive in the sense that it's, but if you put a, if you give a man a fair trial, a fair, a, a fair trial, that's been honorable. Now, where am I going with all this? And I, I'm about to begin to, to close now. I love what it says here. This is big. It's so big that parents can miss this huge teaching. It's honor that helps children move beyond selfishness. We say that for every form of selfishness, there is an honor-based solution. The practice and training of honor helps our children to become less self-focused, contribute more to the family, and add energy to the environment, and become a blessing to others. These are absolutely great promises that we can see. The next few lines are just, um, what do you call it, resources that the children can access to be able to do what they want to do. But let me close with this story. We all know the story, it's the story of Zacchaeus in the Bible. Zacchaeus is a very short man. He's what I call a customs officer or an immigration officer who's making a lot of money from people by extorting money from them, delaying their goods from crossing the border. We all know the story. This is a very, 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 very self-centered, greedy, selfish man. It's obvious. And he's heading to see Jesus. But when he gets there, there's such a crowd, but he's also a short man. So he decides to figure out which pathway Jesus is going to go through. And when he finds that pathway, he climbs on top of a tree in order for Jesus to see him and for him to see Jesus. And then what happens? Something surprising happens. Jesus sees him. And Jesus says, I'm coming to your house today, right now. And this is the interesting thing. Jesus coming to Zacchaeus' house is it's simply Jesus honoring Zacchaeus. And it's like having the, the, the Pope or, or, or the President of the United States of America, or maybe even, <laughs> I shouldn't make fun of Peter right now, but it's like having the President of America coming to visit your home. That's a great honor. Everybody wants that. It's a great honor when a very famous, uh, well-known person decides he wants to visit you. There's something about it that rubs off on you. And so Zacchaeus is sitting there, and Jesus is saying, I want to come to your house. Now, Jesus doesn't preach to Zacchaeus about how unrighteous he has been, or how much money he has cheated, or how much he's owing. But even while they were on the trip home, there has been no encounter, no preaching, no sermons. Zacchaeus begins to say, I'm going to begin to restitute. I'm going to give four times what I've taken. I'm going to return what I've stolen. And he begins to get because somebody honored him and God honored him. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is why honor is so critical to where we are right now. This is why honor is so important. It's so important. It's so important. It's uh, something you and I cannot afford to forget. And so I want to encourage you this, this morning as I play us out with music in a few minutes. I just want to encourage you and I. I just want to encourage you. Please don't forget. We're heading to walking in favor with God and with men in an increased manner. I really want to walk in favor. I want to walk in favor of my business. And one thing we're being told right now, if we honor our customers, they will honor us. It will give us value. And of course, in the network service, we're going to talk about honor from a different perspective, but it comes down to the same thing. We need to take this topic of honor very, very, very seriously. Very, very seriously. So we're going to pray while this song is going on. Just going to pray in the Holy Ghost. And God is going to help us. Oh, how beautiful <laughs> it is to see you moving. Oh, how beautiful it is to see you move. You've poured out your spirit on every heart. You've sent forth your word. And it's come to pass What our fathers and mothers Could only foretaste Is now in our lifetime The order of day Eyes are unfailing Hearts are aligning Dead bones are rising his spirit is moving Eyes are unveiling Hearts are aligning Dead dreams are rising His spirit is moving He's breaking addictions yes. And breaking religion yes. His spirit is moving Spirit is freedom
addict, he has done it. Amen. He's breaking addiction. Yes. Amen. And breaking religion. Yes. Amen. His spirit is freedom. Amen. His spirit is moving. Amen. So yes and amen. Amen. Yes. your spirit on every heart you've sent forth your word and it's come to pass what our fathers and mothers could only foretaste is now in our lifetime the order of day just receive amen, amen. just receive amen, amen. you can just receive amen, amen. you can just receive amen, amen. just receive amen, amen. just receive amen, amen. you can just receive amen, amen. you can just receive Amen. You are rebuilding the ruined walls. You are reclaiming your design. You descend as fire to purify. You are reclaiming your works. You prune as the thistles and the thorns fall away. So we may produce good fruit. For the harvest is here. Lord has said it, and he has done it. You have said well, it, God. Thank you, my brother. Singing only for this beautiful song. And really, really do appreciate the excellence that's coming out of our country as we close. We're going to be continuing in the next 30 minutes or so with honor in the network service from a slightly different perspective, from an anointed, anointing perspective. That's going to be the final of this series. And uh, tomorrow as well, we're going to have our Monday prayer meeting, looking at this honor thing again, and the demand from God asking us to love each other with genuine affection and taking delight in honoring each other. We'll be looking at what does it mean to be vessels of honor during the midweek service. I hope you've been getting something out of it. And of course, on Wednesday, we look at this topic in depth in Bible study called Honor All Men, Love the Brotherhood, Fear God, Honor the King. And so, once again, I want to say thank you so much. I'm going to share a short video right now that will give you details on how to support this ministry, how to give, how to stay in touch if you want the slides or you want the notes or you want links to the YouTube video. They're all on this particular. Uh, and, and right now on this particular post, but they're also in the ad, in this simple advert I'm about to share with you right now. Welcome. This is the Bridge Network, City Church, Canada. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Our vision is outstanding life and service to God, transforming our world. We invite you to come for the word, and we know that you will stay for the kingdom. The Bridge Network City Church, Canada, is based in Vancouver at the moment where we're starting out. And uh, we believe so strongly in connecting to each other, to community, and of course, to God. And to be a part of this, everything you need to know about how to give, how to support, how to contact us, is right there on the screen in front of you. The number is 1-604-600-7940 website is thebridgenetwork.ca. We look forward to hearing from you. We thank you so much for being part of what we're doing today. And remember, the Bridge Network City Church Canada is here just for you. God bless you.
Well, thank you so much for being here this morning. I'm going to stop live streaming and then we're going to come back in 30 minutes for the network service and I hope you will join us as well. So God bless you and have a wonderful day.